Hello and welcome to the next lecture in the course on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varshapte, I am a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at IIT Bombay and today we will be talking about introduction to queuing systems. So a quick recall of how we ended the last lecture, uh, we were talking about the various ways that performance analysis of computing systems can be done or networks. Um, one was measuring, then we talked about simulation and we said that analytical methods which is basically mathematical methods uh, with pen and paper and just reasoning are the ones that are the focus of this that give most insights require a little bit of expertise the kind that you will learn in this course, but it will give you quick answers and uh, uh, as opposed to that uh, measuring is of course very flexible you can create any scenario in it, but it is costly uh, it, it can also be more realistic whereas mathematical models are uh, can be need some, some assumptions that sometimes are not realistic. Again continuing the recall uh, that uh, we went through this table which had specific metrics and parameters that were specific to these resource uh, resources, CPU, cellular channels, web server threads, wireless mediums, these were specific to these resources. Uh, but we found that in a fundamental level they were all very similar, this is what we went through in the last lecture. And the main insight was uh, that everything uh, seems similar like there is a jobs per second here and the calls carried per second, then uh, is not a generalized model possible. And that is what brings us to a, our next focus which is queuing systems which is precisely that it is a universal mathematical model that represents any resource and user uh, pair that we uh, the kind that we discussed in the last couple of lectures uh, in a generic way. We will use general terminology, but it can represent everything that we showed in the previous table. So, uh, let us start uh, with uh, how does one describe a queuing system, uh, what does it consist of, uh, I will go through some standard parameters and description and um, first thing I am going to talk about something called open queuing system and what is that, uh, that is the following, Okay, this is how we generalize the model. First of all, uh, let us assume just one server, one resource, so let us say like one CPU or one printer, something like that. Um, we show that by a circle like this, okay, this is the resource. Um, then we show a queue for it in this way and in the terminology of queuing systems we call this a server. We can call this uh, maybe queue or buffer, sometimes it is called waiting room. Okay, so, this is a server, this is the queue and then we show an arrow like this to show arrivals. And the most general word that we use for these things that come here, we call these customers. So, this is customer, this is server, this is the queue. Um, and, and that is what uh, basically describes a queuing system, we will go into more details. Uh, if there are more uh, servers, so let us say there are um, you know 4 CPUs or um, you know 2, uh, two network links, let us say 2 network links, how do we show them? We show them uh, by having 2 circles, so we can have something like this. that is it. We also show departures like this, there is an arrow of course whatever comes in gets the service and leaves right. So, these are departures and we can show this here also. And if there are many suppose it was not just two, but there are many servers it is hard to actually draw them on this suppose there are it is like a 64 core CPU. How are you going to show it? You just do a dotted line here. We can write like 1 here and 64 here, something like that we can do. 
ok. So, this is basically the standard way something called an open queuing system is shown. Now, what do I mean open? We mean that uh, there is this server system and there are these external arrivals to it. That means, uh, customers come to the system from somewhere and they can also depart from it. So, there is departing outside of the system. So, if we think of it uh, that this is actually uh, a, this is the server system, then requests are coming from it to it from outside and also leaving the system that is why it is considered uh, open. So, we will also of course, learn what closed means soon, uh, but this is open. Um, so, now what are the ways, what are the things that we, uh, we cannot just draw a picture and be happy right. There were so many things we discussed that uh, describe the resources, the parameters and the metrics. So, right now since we are talking about the parameters, let us go ahead with that. So, for, a, for the server side, we, we, we will first talk about the number, okay. we can have the number, how many resources do we have, how many servers do we have in the queuing system terminology. Then we talk about what is the service time. Okay. Now, this is a very specific terminology, it means how long time for which the resource is uh, exclusively held by the customer. Okay. So, this is very you have to really uh, remember this uh, te terminology service time, uh, it includes only the time that the customer is actually using the server. Okay. So, if, uh, if this is a, a web server, let us say these are threads of a web server, then it, this is the amount of time that an HTTP request is actually holding that thread. Okay. Uh, if it is a CPU, then it is the amount of time that a thread is actually executing in the CPU. Okay. So, there is a service time uh, and service time is described how we have an average for it, we can also have the probability distribution for it. Okay, we can have the probability distribution for it. Um, and uh, once you have the probability distribution actually that is the most detailed description you can get of a service time. Okay, so, that is about the servers. Um, then we have uh, what about the customer arrivals? It is very similar what we have here is uh, we have we know that many customers are going to come here and the customer arrivals are described by inter arrival time distribution. Again by distribution I mean probability distribution. Okay, so, this is described by an inter arrival time distribution um, and that is it uh, that can also once you have the distribution then you can have the average inter arrival time. And the reciprocals of these uh, become rates. Okay. So, uh, then you, you can actually also describe this by an arrival rate and you can also describe the service uh, speed by a service rate. Okay. Just 1 divided by the average inter arrival time is the arrival rate and 1 divided by the average service time is the service rate. Okay. Then uh, a very important parameter is also what is the size of this buffer. Okay. Uh, so, size of the buffer is an important thing. So, size uh, sometimes if it is very large we actually assume that it is uh, infinite. Now, infinite does not there is not really any such a thing uh, uh, in reality as an infinite buffer. It is just that if, if it is so large that it is okay to assume that it is infinite for the reasoning part, then we just consider it as infinite. Um, so, we have the number of uh, servers, the service rate, the queue size, the arrival rate uh, and the last uh, but not the least is uh, you, you cannot analyze a queuing system unless you know what is the, I will write it in another color, 
scheduling policy. Okay? That means if on arrival this uh, server is busy or all these servers are busy, then whenever it becomes idle one of the server finishes its uh, processing then which of these is it going to pick. Okay? That is basically what a scheduling policy is. We know some, some standard scheduling policies like first come first serve, there is actually also last come first serve for some reasons sometimes last come first serve is used. There is priority, there is in your operating systems you would have learnt round robin. Um, so, all of all those are scheduling policies. Okay? So, this next picture is just showing everything that we just talked about in a clean way just to repeat everything. Uh, we have the service time which has the average and the distribution. Uh, again recall that time for which one customer holds one server, uh, 1 divided by average service time is the service rate. Uh, we have the uh, overall service rate of course, uh, if we have multiple servers then uh, the overall service rate of the system becomes the number of servers multiplied by the service rate of one server. Okay. So, uh, if one server is going at a certain speed, uh, um, more servers can go at a faster speed right? overall. Then we have the waiting room, we have the customer inter arrival time, we have the average, the distribution and arrival rate is 1 divided by this uh, uh, average inter arrival time and then we have the queuing discipline. Okay. Um, I will just uh, maybe give some examples here, uh, let us say service time is, um, is uh, this average here is 10 milliseconds. This typically the time you can say a request uh, a web server request might take for doing some computation or some other work. So, uh, let us say service time is 10 milliseconds, um, then the service rate will be 1 by 10 which uh, this will be requests per millisecond. So, that is actually 100 requests per second. right? So, this becomes 100 requests per second that can be the service rate. If there were 2 servers then the overall service rate is 200 requests per second. Um, yeah, servers can be 2, uh, waiting room size we can say let us say maybe 200 requests can sit in the buffer. Um, if it is such that you know really it is 20,000 or something then we could just uh, let us say it was uh, 20,000 we can just uh, call it infinite maybe it is big enough that we can call it infinite. So, this is actually a modeler's decision the person who is reasoning about the queuing system it is their decision as to if it is very large then shall I just call it as infinite. And uh, customer inter arrival time let us say it could be uh, 1 every 20 milliseconds. Okay. So, in that case actually the arrival rate will be you can do the calculation it will actually become 100 requests sorry 50 requests per second it will be 50 requests per second. So, these are the kind of, uh, of uh, numbers you can have I am not yet talking about the distributions we will talk about that in a moment. Similarly, uh, there is another formulation of queuing systems called closed. Okay. In the closed queuing system, um, we are not only worried about the server system, but we want to include the sources of the requests, okay, the source of the request, where are the requests coming from, where are the customers coming from. We want to include that in our modeling um, and, uh, and then it becomes closed because uh, there are no external arrivals, they are actually coming from the, um, the users or the, 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 the wherever the customers are and there are no departures outside the system. So, the way we draw these uh, typically are uh, again I will just show let us say a single server here, the server part is the same, okay. there are arrivals, there are departures, but these arrivals are now coming from another place which we call the client station. We can also call this the server station 
and these are actually coming from here and after the service they are actually going back here. What does this represent? Uh, you can think that this represents uh, let us say there are students in a lab on a fixed number of PCs. Okay. So, fixed number of students in the lab uh, on a fixed number of PCs interacting uh, with a, a uh, institute server, some server. So, what does what are the students uh, doing uh, typically? Uh, they will uh, let us say they issue uh, they click on a let us say they are interacting with a, uh, a, a web server a website of the institute. They will click on the link and then the request goes to the server this is a web server. It uh, may it may queue for the thread it will get processed and then the response will come back uh, to the user and then the user does what we call think. Okay, so, this represents the response. So, this is the page, the web page which has gone back to the user. Now, when the student is looking at the web page, uh, she will spend some time actually reading that web page, something will be there on that web page, she will look at it and then she will click on the next link right and then again she will click on the next link and then again the request for that page will go to the server and then the page will be sent back again she will read the web page again. So, this is a request response loop. So, in a closed system the users are in a request response and then you read which in our terminology we call think and then you go back and re issue the request again. So, users are in the request response loop and there is nothing coming into this system from outside and nothing going out. Okay. So, here we, we draw we say that this is one, one system our entire system is this and it is closed nothing goes in nothing goes out. Um, a request uh, uh, is either here meaning it is in the user's head okay, or it is or it is here or it is actually executing. But other it is not not does not go out or nothing comes in that is why these systems are called closed. So, um, these are the two types of queuing systems again this just shows the same picture uh, cleanly uh, the earlier parameters for the server system are again applicable for the closed system everything is just repeat here, but how are the clients described ok we need some quantitative way to describe the clients again you have the number of clients ok this is fixed. And then the think time again has an average and it has a distribution. Okay, whenever there is a time in queuing systems, we will have an average for it and we will have a probability distribution. Okay. So, again this is just bringing everything together uh, the descriptors of a queuing system. We have the number of servers, uh, waiting room um, and, and its size, the service time distribution, the inter arrival time distribution. Uh, the number of users if it is closed this is if closed this is not required if it is open and of course, we cannot uh, ignore the queuing discipline. Okay. These are the descriptors and these descriptors actually have some standard parameter notations the number of servers we will typically denote by C and of course, these the values this can take is 1, 2, 3 and so on. Uh, size of the buffer we show by capital K. Uh, size of the buffer note it can be 0 sometimes there are queuing systems in which actually there is no queue. Uh, remember uh, we had the example of this was cellular network cellular uh, okay, when we place a cellular call and all if at all all the channels are busy we just get a network busy signal we are not put in any queue. Okay. So, we need a uh, 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 so, k uh, size of buffer can go from 0 to uh, remember that we can also in assume infinity if there are too many uh, if this buffer size is very large. Then service time and inter arrival time distributions uh, there are various standard distributions that people assume uh, there is of course, constant if the service time is just fixed for every request then you can assume constant the formal word for it is deterministic. 
then there are distributions like exponential uniform you would have learned this in in your uh, undergraduate uh, mathematics and general means it can be just not a standard distribution uh, then we have the symbol lambda for the average arrival rate uh, the symbol tau okay for average service time and the reciprocal of the service time is the average service rate so mu here is equal to 1 by tau okay uh, and of course then we have the system service rate which will be c mu um, so since we were talking uh, about the probability distributions uh, we are not going to go very much in depth uh, in this course uh, every now and then whenever we need some uh, some specific piece of knowledge from probability distributions we will revise it. So right now since I was talking so much about probability distributions I thought I will just refresh it a little bit. So uh, what is a probability distribution? So let x be a continuous random variable now there are many words here. Random variable of course means a quantity uh, that can take uh, uh, some varied values with uh, some, some randomness to it right you cannot exactly uh, it is not constant it does not always take the same value. Uh, so, anything uh, any so many things in life are random variables and what is continuous? Continuous means there are not a, uh, a discrete or countable uh, set of values. For example, you know temperature okay, temperature in Mumbai let us say. So, it is some random variable which can take a value let us say in an extreme case uh, if we could even uh, if we have lot of climate change we could go to 5 degree Celsius to maximum let us say 50 degree Celsius. So, of course, that is where the probability is right the probability of a uh, 5 degrees Celsius uh, temperature in Mumbai is almost 0 even 50 is almost uh, 0, but 30 is uh, probably I would say half of the time it is around 30 plus minus right not exactly 30 though that is the whole point about continuous we cannot say that it is exactly 30 we can say uh, probability uh, of the temperature being like 28 to 35 is almost uh, more than half ok. So that makes it a continuous random variable you can take any value like 28.013 or uh, 35.961 there is no it can take any value right. Um, then uh, for a continuous random variable we define this cumulative distribution function which is the probability that the uh, random variable takes some value less than t and we denote that by f of x fx of t. Uh, then uh, again uh, recall that small fx t is the derivative of this cdf and that is called the probability density function and uh, this is not exactly the probability but it is something that is close that goes up and down with the probability of random variable taking a value near this this t ok. So, note that this is not a probability ok. It is basically just the derivative of this cdf. So, uh, examples of probability distributions are uniform exponential again I just want to give an intuitive uh, feeling and, uh, and, and, and recall. So, for example, uniform if you remember that just means that every uh, value uh, there is no bias and, and there is nothing like uh, certain values are more probable than the others it is not like that. So, for example, the continuous uniform distribution uh, uniform uh, is usually between uh, shown like this uh, will be between some some parameters a and b. So, when we say that uh, an x is a uniform random variable taking values between a to b the this is the pdf ok. The pdf will look something like this this is a this is b and everywhere it is 0 only it will have some value here and then everywhere else also it is 0 and this value in fact is 1 over b minus a ok. You do not have to remember all of this too much just giving a uh, feeling uh, re recalling what uh, distributions are uh, and then we have the exponential distribution which is uh, the picture goes like this ok. Um, again this is f x t where x is exponential. 
um, and this is T. So, this is just what uh, the PDF looks like. Uh, for return for constant uh, we can also draw a CDF, but constant just means that it takes a fixed value. with probability 1 ok. So, this is actually a discrete random variable ok. So, uh, th this is just to recall what, what, are, what probability distributions are and when we talk about queuing systems we have to make some assumptions about these things and that is how we can do the reasoning. Now, queuing systems have one more way to describe them and that is called the Kendall notation. Um, and that has these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, spots which you have to fill with certain notation. The first one uh, is about the inter arrival time distribution and these distributions that I just talked about uh, they are denoted by D for deterministic, M for exponential and that is because exponential is something called memory less um, and I am going to go into this in the next lecture uh, or G for general which means we are not making uh, any assumption. Uh, y the next thing here denotes the service time distribution again we will use the same symbols for it. Uh, Z is the number of servers and uh, uh, that is this spot here, uh, A here is buffer size and uh, this, this B here is population size this is for closed systems only and this last thing is the discipline ok. So, for example, if I show you this whole notation like this it means inter arrival is exponential. Uh, the service time distribution is general we do not really know we do not really are uh, not making any standard assumption for it. Number of servers is 4, buffer size is 50, uh, this is the closed system with 2000 clients and the discipline is last come first serve. Um, here are some examples, uh, we have uh, let us say a web server with 256 threads, 256 buffer size and if it is uh, modeled as an open queue then uh, and we are not making any assumptions about the inter arrival time distribution or service time distribution then we have GG 256 256 and what we do is uh, if FCFS you know we can drop the uh, notation. So, we do not have to write slash slash this just if I do not write anything it means FCFS. Um, then we have the cellular channels remember suppose there are 20 channels in a cell no buffer uh, and call duration let us say is exponentially distributed then and we, we are not making an assumption about the inter arrival. So, that is G M number of channels is 20 and buffer size is 0. If we have uh, let us say the last example is of the CPU queuing system itself there were 256 web server threads using a 4 core CPU. Uh, now, uh, these threads are not going anywhere they are just fixed these are fixed number of threads. So, this becomes a closed system and these 256 threads are like the users which uh, sometimes use the CPU or sometimes are idle. So, we have this is a closed system uh, this will be the service time is fixed we are assuming a fixed service time we have um, 4 cores we have uh, we do not assume a fixed uh, uh, a short buffer size we anything more than 256 means it is going to be enough. So, it is ok to assume a large buffer size uh, then we have um, 256 is the population and processor sharing is the queuing discipline. So, this is the queuing discipline which is close to round robin. Right, so, it is close to round robin and it is what is used often for uh, CPUs. So, um, with this uh, we will stop uh, we are done with the introduction to queuing systems and uh, now we will see uh, how we get some metrics out of the queuing systems and uh, that will be in the next lecture. So, uh, these are some examples of uh, queuing systems in the Kendall notation that we just saw. But, uh, the whole point of defining a queuing system uh, is to analyze it right we do not just want to describe the parameters and be done with it. So, what are the metrics of an open queuing system remember that 
uh, when we talked about that parameters and matrix table we said that we can we can have a general model. So, the general model is not only for the parameters it is for the matrix also. So, uh, these are the metrics of the open queuing system. Uh, first thing we can talk about uh, the uh, when a customer comes into the system how long is the customer going to be uh, waiting. So, depending on uh, what the uh, queuing discipline is it could be the time from the, uh, the, star, the arrival into the queuing system to the uh, start of service. This is one way to define the waiting time, but if it is if the scheduling discipline here is uh, preemptive for example, remember round robin is a preemptive service discipline which means that even after a request starts in the server it may get uh, actually it may get preempted and put back into the queue and another job can start. If that is the case then waiting time is actually defined as total time spent in queue because you may spend some time in the uh, uh, you, you may arrive at a certain time start the service, but again put back into the queue. So, waiting time is really the total time spent in the queue. So, that is one metric. Um, then we have throughput uh, which is basically the rate at which requests complete successfully. Anyway this arrow here shows a successful completion and the rate at which uh, requests complete this is called throughput. So, this can represent the uh, bits per second uh, uh, carried by a link, this can represent calls per second carried by a cellular network uh, and so on. Um, then we have for the servers we have a very important metric called utilization. This is actually the average number of busy servers divided by the total number of servers. So, sometimes uh, you can have you know um, 50 percent of the servers are busy or 80 percent of the servers are busy on an average and that is uh, server utilization. Uh, then we have um, response time of course, this is waiting time plus service time ok. So, waiting plus service. So, this would be the total absolute total time the request spends in this whole system that is response time. Uh, if we have a finite buffer, we can have a request that comes in, it does not actually get space in the buffer and it is dropped right. So, that is called uh, we capture that behavior by a metric called blocking probability. Uh, then there are uh, two more metrics, one is what is the average, what is the queue length that is how many customers are to be found here and a related metric which is how many customers are found in the whole system. And for all of these metrics actually we talk about the average uh, which is the most uh, simple and most uh, common metric that most people are uh, most common statistic of the metric that we are avail, uh, we are interested in. Uh, then we may talk about the variance uh, and, and the most detailed thing that we may want from this uh, is the distribution. We may want the probability distribution let us say the probability distribution. of the uh, of the uh, uh, Q length or we may want the CDF cumulative distribution function of the response time. So, uh, these are the kind of things uh, we may want uh, from a queuing system. Um, this is just the same thing repeated here uh, just to remind that the Q length the utilization and the throughput are going to be system metrics. These are things that the uh, system owner is interested in. Remember when we talked about system and user perceived metrics earlier and the other ones the waiting time, response time and blocking probability are metrics that uh, the actual customer will experience and can be measured by the user. So, these are uh, the classification of the performance metrics that we saw. So, uh, this concludes our introduction to queuing systems, the parameters, the metrics and uh, we talked about one particular uh, property called memorylessness when we talked about the exponential distribution 
and uh, like I said uh, there are some uh, background from probability that we will just uh, revise as needed and one of that is going to be memorylessness, so that will come next, thank you.